It's mm. this piece has this has been a year collaboration, mm. but it's been so genuine because it's sisters coming mm. together, mm. loving our community. That's what black women do is we love our community. We love our people. And so when we're able to open up our access to who our people are, who our community is. It's beautiful. The only people that are going to save black folks in this world are black folks. <laughs> <laughs> So now let me ask you, um, what is the way so far? What is the way forward so far for this collaboration? What do we do next? What are we waiting for? What is the next thing for us to do now? Mm, that's a good question. I think the next thing, um, I will be honest, you know, having my children here this time, um, it allows me to see things from the youth perspective because yeah. they're able to have conversations right. that I'm not able to have and really gain understanding. I'm, I'm old, I'm 44, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I have four children. You know, I, I do things from my own perspective, yeah. but they're able to give me um, what the children need and their, their understanding of mm. what they need is a little bit different. Um, I'm really lucky uh, that my partner, he's the one who introduced me to all of this. Oh, okay. we, we were, we actually came, um, we're, we're like I said, we own a production company mm -hmm. and we do a TV show called She Shows Up, she shows where up. I travel around the world interviewing incredible black women. Wow. And big. <laughs> I wish, hopefully. <laughs> but he um, he came to Ghana and he mm -hmm. said, we're going to do our first episode okay. in Ghana. Okay. And so I thought I was just going to interview dope women yeah, in Ghana, yeah, you know, because yeah. that's the yeah. thing. He brought me to the Queens. He brought me to this whole world in this space that I didn't even know existed. Yeah. And so all the work that I've done with women and all mm. the work that I've done across uh, the country and the world, I didn't recognize what was here yeah. and the depth of what was here until yeah. I came that first time. And it changed my life. Wow. We came the second time. We did a whole road trip all the way up to Togo. Ooh, we went to oh, Volta nice. region, camped on the <laughs> on the beach in Volta yeah. region. What? What? <laughs> what? Who does that? You know, and then I brought my children. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I didn't realize that they were going to experience was safety and freedom to the extent that they have. Yeah. We don't have that in the States. Freedom. Freedom. We don't have safety. You know, the reality of black folks being so hurt mm -hmm. that we hurt other black folks. Right. I've lost three friends in the last couple of days that I've been here. Three. Right? Three. That I've lost. That's not what the city has lost. Yeah, you, you know, so... Mean. We had a, and so if you've lost three, what about the everybody else? Three? There was a shooting not too long ago where, oh. they, where there were 17, 18 year olds that were shot and killed and they killed other 18 year olds. Oh. And so they don't get to walk down the street in my city mm. with safety yeah. and joy. The whole time they've been in Ghana, honey, they've yeah. been jumping through here. They were talking about crocodiles, <laughs> I, right? I saw you guys uh, three days ago at Sahara Beach. You were Dancing. dancing that's right yeah, yes yeah. So, yeah, you guys were like chilling and all that he yeah. has already told me about it sent me a video or a picture so yes. I was like okay this is the family yes. like, you guys were really having fun we right? had an amazing time yeah. and you know and that's what African Americans seek yeah. so getting African Americans to come and get that joy here mm. but while they're getting the joy you got to invest in the space yeah. you know you we it is our job to protect this land mm -hmm. as well you know the part of what we have the opportunity to bring are the resources that we have. Because yeah. when we come here, we're going to eat the mango. We're going to eat that pineapple. <laughs> we're going we to dance with the yeah, people, you know. Yeah. We're going to do all the things and gain all that goodness. But it is uh, imperative that we invest in the spaces. So whatever you're good at, whatever your gift from God is, yeah. you bring that God-given gift home. Yeah. So if you are a teacher, come teach. Mm -hmm. If you are a doctor, come heal. If you're a lawyer, come advocate. Right. Yeah. If you're a professor, help them get their degrees. Right. right? Like, let's you know, bring the best of what you have. Probably. And that's all you have to do. Yeah. You know, people think that, you know, support and love is so big. Like, it's too big. Nah, it's too it's big. Not. No, just be the best of who you are and bring that home. And it will be right. Ghana is one of those places that, you know, you can imagine what the best of you mm -hmm. is and you can be that, yeah. right? And so, so be that, be the best of what you are because then the people will, will be able to receive and the country will thrive even more. Great, so being the best you are, I read an, an article that uh -oh. says that you're an attorney. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she's a lawyer. Yeah, we say a lawyer. Okay. I don't know if you use the same word with it. We, lawyer, okay, attorney, lawyer, same attorney. thing, yeah. Mm -hmm. And in Ghana, you can't be a rasta, because I know you have dread, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. You can't be a raster and be a teacher or a doctor or a nurse. You can't be any of them. But you're a raster and, 
and you have dreads mm-hmm. and then you're a lawyer yes how was it like i mean what was the difficult part or the easy part and what is going on now with you yes so what's so funny is I get called a Rasta in Ghana. It's oh. so everybody calls me a Rasta. Yeah, because if you have dreads, like, they call them Rasta. Rasta yes, yeah. and so because everyone like because my my imagine is Rasta is it's a culture and tradition yeah. in Jamaican culture. Yeah. I don't. That's not me. And, I, and 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 one of the items that makes one a Rasta is when you have dread. You have dread. Yeah, locks. so yes. maybe that is where a lot of people. If you call, call me Rasta, Rasta. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. And so what's interesting is, um, I work with black women in okay. Louisiana. And one of the things that we fight against discrimination across the board. Okay. One area of discrimination that happens in the States is natural hairstyles. Okay. So being able to wear our hair the way we want to. Mm. Now it's different in the States mm. because the reason why we're not able to wear our natural hairstyles is because white folks find black hair offensive. They find the white, the, the black hair offensive. offensive. And so there have been laws since we were enslaved mm-hmm. that said we had to cover our hair because white women didn't like it. Whoa. There were <laughs> in their laws in school. So even it's not even locks, it's braids. Little girls at school getting mm-hmm. their braids cut out if they want to go to school, getting kicked out of school. Um, people getting, you know, any kind of hairstyle that is black, mm-hmm. not just locks, but any hairstyle that's attributed to blackness, blackness. and race it's you can discriminate against and so one of the things that i worked hard on Mm -hmm. um is getting laws passed that said you can't do that that you cannot say i have i can't wear my hair the way i choose um and black hair the way i want to (laughs) with and we were able to do that and so my partner and i worked and we put together films that told the story of black hair and got like the first laws passed in our state in our set thank you (laughs) (laughs) yeah shout out to damien d smith for those incredible films those Mm -hmm. award-winning films and that's what's changed our state so when it comes to hair it is a sensitive topic for me Mm -hmm. in the states however in Ghana, mm-hmm. I'm a guest. Even though this is home, yeah. culturally, traditionally, I am a guest. So it's hard for me to have an opinion mm-hmm. on the reason why things culturally are occur yeah. because I don't know fully the context yeah. of why that is. Um, and so, you know, I, you know, I haven't experienced any negative understanding mm-hmm. of who I am here when it comes to my hair yeah. um but i this is actually you know because i haven't experienced yeah. that but i will say that hair for black women or black women in the states mm. is an expression of pride in okay. who we are okay. i chose locks because it makes me feel like i can be fully myself okay. you know there is black women when we are showing love to each other in the States, we, mm. we touch each other's hair. Okay. So when you're doing locks, you roll the locks, mm-hmm. um, you get someone to roll your locks yeah. and, and tighten them mm-hmm. up, right? Yeah. Yeah. There are so many black women's hands that have touched this hair. Okay. So this is love. This is love. This is love. This is, you okay. know, when I've been sad, when I've been tired, yeah, black women have poured love it, into yeah. me and I can feel it's like it's a hug. Yeah, and okay. so that that's why I wear locks because okay. when I'm out in the States, fighting racism, mm-hmm. when I'm fighting sexism, when mm-hmm. I'm fighting bigotry and yeah. hatred towards black folks and women, yeah. I can touch my hair and I'm reminded yeah. of what love feels like. Yeah. And so I feel like what the reason why we choose a hairstyle is because that we want to elevate how yeah. we feel. So whatever hairstyle we choose, we should allow people to wear that so that they can feel big, yeah. so that the community can thrive. Yes, we need to respect that, you know, people and how they want to live, how they want to have certain things on. Now, there are people who are watching you. I know you're big, so you have a lot of people <laughs> watching you now. What would you say your last word to the brothers and sisters in the diaspora who would want to try and move to the motherland or pay a visit or do mm-hmm. anything, invest me anything? What is your last words to these people? Mm. You know, I, I actually did a post the other day. Okay. Um, and I, I said, Ghana is New Orleans. Okay. Ghana and New Orleans are Haiti. Mm-hmm. We are Jamaica. Mm-hmm. We are the black kids that are playing soccer in France. Yeah. We are the black kids that are building space in Spain mm-hmm. and Portugal because that's where they were taken from. And it's not until we understand that we are all the same, not until we recognize that we are going to be the ones to save ourselves, Mm -hmm. that we will win and actually feel what freedom feels like.
And so if you are thinking about supporting or being in this space, mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. Because if you love yourself, if you love your children and you love your community, you will support everybody equally and yeah. bring the best yeah. of what you have, right. the best of who you are, right. to the spaces that need it. Wow. wow. <laughs> this is awesome. Hey. So I'm um, really, really happy having this conversation with a big sister and then a queen mother. Yes. So forget about big sister. She's a queen mother. I need to respect that. So thank you very much, guys, for checking out my YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to be talking more. I'll be following up with some of the project that you're doing and let everybody see that, hey, this is what is going on on the motherland. So thank you very much for being on my YouTube channel. Thank you for having me. This was a blessing. All right. All right. <laughs>